the Second Polish Republic in the Second World War. While in most cases, people will think of horrible suffering and the Holocaust, if we take out a map, we'll inevitably stumble across the territorial changes of the country. These aerial transformations, often summarized as the westward shift of Poland, were a result of four major factors. Kraut, vodka, climate, two rivers, as well as a vital fifth, the war ending in an allied victory. Germany's invasion of Poland in 1939 was the event that basically began the Polish territorial transformation. After the one month long attack, the western half up until mostly the Curzon line became German, with Danzig, West Prussia, the Warteland and North Silesia coming under direct control of Berlin, little territory handed to Slovakia and the rest made into a new puppet state, the general government, with its administrative center at Krakow. This territory in the north, called the Subaki Triangle, plus some areas around the Polish city of Kiatyanov, were also annexed and incorporated into East Prussia. With this annexation of 48% of former Polish territory, Germany achieved its main goals in the country. At least in the western half. Sixteen days after Germany invaded Poland from the west, the Red Army crossed the Polish border in the east. Within three weeks, Poland fell and most of the former eastern borderlands, Kresy for short, became part of the Belarusian and Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republics, with the region around Vilnius returned to Lithuania, which, after roughly nine months, was also incorporated into the USSR. However, as one and a half years passed, Germany decided to give its show a sequel and invaded the Soviet Union in June 1931. With the invasion being at first a huge success, after one month the Bialystok district came under German occupation. The former southeastern Polish territories were also awarded to the general government. The rest was split up between the German puppet states of Ukraine and Ostland. Within a single month, all of pre-war Poland was controlled by German forces. But then came two winters and a Stalingrad, and by 1943 the Soviets had the Germans so much on the run that at the Tehran conference in that November, Stalin addressed the question of former Polish lands. Unsurprisingly, he decided to keep it, because no matter how big the USSR was, territory was always useful and by that time the war state had turned against the Axis. In his mind, all the territory east of the Curzon demarcation line came under control of Moscow. While the Western Allies didn't think that having a power on the victorious side, losing almost half of its territory was a good idea, they still wanted the formidably sized Red Army to fight on their side, so they reluctantly agreed, and the Cressy was gone. As a compensation for the loss of the Cressy, the Allies proposed to give Poland other territories after the war. So, they began eyeing up neighboring countries to carve up some territory out of them for the Polish. Well, you can't expect Stalin to give away parts of his own country, Bessarabia was annexed way back in 1930, and you can't hurt Czechoslovakia because it's an allied power. That leaves us only and only with the ultimately not free city of Danzig and Germany, which was to lose the war in two years, so you could do basically anything with it, because losers' words don't matter. The annexation of Danzig and East Prussia was an obvious choice. These regions were geographically detached from Germany, the Polish government and people had special rights at Danzig, and it was basically just weird to have such big exclaves on the map. The problem with East Prussia was, however, that it had this city in it. Königsberg, for youngsters, Kaliningrad, a major town and military base. But its biggest advantage was that it had an ice-free, year-round, and warm water port to the Baltic Sea, something which Russia really lacked since St. Petersburg and Tallinn freeze in the winter and Riga was part of a country forcibly annexed by the Soviets, so the Latvians weren't too keen on sharing their capital city with Moscow's military equipment. So Stalin basically stated that Kaliningrad would become part of the Soviet Union and that was that. 
East Prussia was cut in two with this almost straight line copied from colonial powers and the upper bit went to the Russian SFSR while the lower bit was given to Poland. Then the Allies realized that half of East Prussia and Danzig was far from enough compensation for the loss of the eastern borderlands and wanted to give more. So they began to eye up more German territory laying towards the west. With this decision, the real westward shift began. Pushing Poland's borders further west was also a good thing for the Soviets, because one, Poland would become communist and the territorial compensation could get Moscow a better reputation, and two, the Western allies, with whom the USSR's relations started to sour, would be pushed back by a bigger buffer state. Even Soviet authorities stated that Stalin's aim was to push Polish borders as far west as possible. In the end, at the Yalta Conference in February 1945, the final new German-Polish border was set up. It followed mostly the Oder and Neisse rivers, hence its name, the oder Neisse line. At the very north, the border was put a bit away from the river to give the port cities of Stettin and Swinemünde, today's Cecin and Swinoistia, to Poland in exchange for Kaliningrad not becoming Polish. However, because the Oder has not functioned as a border for roughly 900 years then, this new border permanently cut cities in two, as we can see from the examples of Frankfurt an der Oder and Schlubice, Guben and Gubin, or Görlitz and Zgorzelet. But the Allies ignored this and made the decision. Three months later, Germany surrendered, two years later, the Paris Peace Treaties were signed, ending World War II in Europe. And with that, our story ends. The oder Neisse line still remains the German-Polish border up until today, after Germany rounds its claims on eastern territories in exchange for reunification. After 1945, the Polish population from the Kresy was mostly expelled and forcibly migrated to the newly acquired western territories, whose German inhabitants were also forcibly expelled to West Indies Germany. There was a massive renaming campaign to put an end to any German dreams for getting the eastern lands back. That pretty much worked, and the new map of Poland will most likely stay the same for a long time. At least hopefully. <laughs>